Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. I've posted a couple of videos here online uh, discussing the Stephen Avery case. Um, I believe the evidence shows he's clearly guilty, right, clearly guilty. And to my surprise, there have been a lot of comments to the videos, right? This story seems to have legs, right? Everyone wants to say, hey, you don't know the facts. He's innocent. Think about this evidence, right? They don't want to just look at the few salient facts that clearly show that this guy isn't who he's represented as being in the video. And that this guy, quite frankly, told some tall tales to the police. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get under the hood here. Let's talk about some facts. I just want to make sure everyone fully understands who Stephen Avery is. Right? And I also want to make sure everyone understands, right, what some of the evidence says. First... Understand that after Stephen Avery was released from prison for the earlier criminal case in which he was falsely convicted, right, in about 2004, understand that an under 18 years of age relative actually claimed that Stephen Avery had sexually assaulted her. Right? She further claims that Avery said to her, if you tell anyone about what we've done, I'm going to kill your family. Now, she actually agreed to delay charges until after the Hallback matter was resolved. Right? This is Avery post his first prison sentence. Now, let's talk about Avery's version of events, at least his initial version, right? He went on Nancy Grace's show in 2005, right? Right when Teresa Hallback goes missing and there was a lot of investigation going on, right? Then they found Hallback's vehicle on his property. So Stephen Avery phones in to Nancy Grace and in that interview, Avery, and it's on tape here on YouTube, says that he met with Teresa Hallback the day of her disappearance, right, between 2 and 2.30, right? That's his claim. Understand, that's consistent with his November 9th statement to the police, which is also here online. Right? When he tells the cops that he meets with her between 2 and 2.30. Now just understand, right around that time, he's making the Star 67 phone calls. Understand at 2.27 that day, right? October the 31st, 2005. Teresa Hallback's employer, Auto Trader, calls her. And she tells them at 2.27 that she's 10 minutes away from the Avery property. Right? Understand at 2.45, Bobby Dassey, the older brother of Brendan Dassey, right? The next door neighbor of Stephen Avery, right? Claims that he saw Hallback walking towards his uncle's trailer, right? Just pay attention to the timeline here. 2.45, right? Understand that Brandon Dassey gets home around 3.40, right? The school bus driver in the 3.30 to 3.40 range claims that she sees Teresa Hallback taking photos, now understand, that timeline doesn't jive with Avery's timeline that has a 
five minute meeting with Teresa Hallback, right? Sometime between 2 and 2.30, right? That's straight out of his November 11th statement, right? So understand that Brandon Dassey claims that he gets off his school bus. Then he rides his bike to the mailbox. Then he sees a letter for Uncle Stephen. So he goes over to Uncle Stephen's house, right? His trailer. And, of course, he passes the burn barrel. Now, this is important, right? And he claims that he sees a cell phone and a camera in the burn barrel. Right? He claims as he walks up to the trailer, he hears a female say, help me. He claims he's at the door for a while before his uncle answers. And his uncle, of course, is sweating profusely. Right? Profusely. Now let's talk about that burn barrel. Understand that Stephen Avery claims in his November 9th interview with the police that he didn't use the burn barrel on Halloween. He didn't use the burn barrel when Teresa Hallback goes missing. But what he admits to is that around 5 p.m. that day, Robert Fabian, a friend of Earl Avery, Right, actually stops by and they talk for a minute. Would it surprise you to know that Robert Fabian claims that he smelled burning plastic coming from Avery's burn barrel when he stopped by? Right, we know that the camera and what have you were burned in that burn barrel, right? If the burn barrel is active, if things are burning in the burn barrel, the day Teresa Hallback goes missing, understand that's inconsistent with Stephen Avery's statement that he didn't use the burn barrel, right? The burn barrel, by the way, is right in front of his house, Right? Understand, no one showed up later to plant things in the burn barrel because Earl Avery's friend smells things burning in the burn barrel at 5 p.m. the day Teresa Hallback goes missing. Brandon Dassey, the day Teresa Hallback goes missing, sees things in the burn barrel, the cell phone, right, her camera, right, on that day. If you're of the mindset that police framed him and that the frame job involved the burn barrel, understand your timeline just doesn't match up with Dassey's testimony or with Robert Fabian's testimony. What's going to be the argument with regard to Robert Fabian? That words were put into his mouth? That he has a low IQ? That he didn't have a lawyer present? Right? Understand their weaknesses other than Brandon Dassey. Right? Also understand that Avery, in his November 9th statement, doesn't even own up to using the burn pit on the day Teresa Hallback goes missing, right? Think about it. People like Scott Tadich actually see the burn pit being used. Brandon Dassey, right, talks about the burn pit being used. Understand that on November 9th, when he gave a statement to the police, right, Stephen Avery would not own up to using the burn pit that day, 
right? Think it through. People want to talk to the discrepancy, you know, of the discrepancy between 10-foot flames and 3-foot flames, right? Just understand, Stephen Avery, in his statement, is claiming he didn't use the burn pit. Understand, too, in his statement to the police, he talks about the last time he used the burn pit, and he talks about the burn pit being right by his dog. Right? For someone to use that burn pit. By the way, he goes further. He talks about burning tires in the burn pit. Right? For someone to use the burn pit, and of course, Avery talks about being either at his trailer or at the Dassey trailer that night. He's literally in the neighborhood. This isn't an abandoned neighborhood where strangers can show up. Avery's around the neighborhood. He's either in his place or he's next door looking at a deer, according to his November 9th statement. Right? Don't get distracted by all this other stuff. The question is, was the burn pit used that night? Right? Why did multiple people see the burn pit being used that night? Also, why is it that multiple people were aware of the burn barrel and smelled, you know, burning plastic coming from the burn barrel that night? night right also why is Avery's timeline contradicted by the phone records how could he meet her between 2 and 2 30 when she's getting a call at 2 27 from her employer and she tells the employer that she is 10 minutes away right now, in fairness to Avery, he does say she usually comes between 2 and 3, right? But he's clear in saying he meets up with her on the Nancy Grace tape. Meets up with her between 2 and 2.30, right? That's what he's claiming. Now, let me say this. Brandon Dassey. What I want to do is to just highlight some portions of Brandon Dassey's testimony, right? His confession that coincidentally correspond with the evidence, right? I'll leave it up to you to look at that confession here online. What I want to do is direct people to an excellent website. StephenAveryCase.com, right? They refer to court transcripts, they summarize the evidence, etc., right? Don't get fooled by people opining here online. What I want you to do is to actually look at the evidence. Here's some factual links between Brandon Dassey's confession and the evidence, right? The bleach bottle recovered was where Dassey said it would be. Right? They also recovered Dassey's bleach stained jeans. Dassey told them he and Avery used a rake and shovel to tend to the fire. Right? By the way, this is the fire that Avery doesn't even admit having in the burn pit on October 31st, 2005, right? And both items, the rake and shovel, referred to by Dassey, were found near the fire pit. Dassey told them handcuffs were used, and they found the handcuffs. Dassey told them Teresa had been in the back of her SUV, where authorities found Teresa's blood. Dassey told them Avery had a cut on his finger. And they found Avery's blood in the SUV. And of course, 
Avery did have a cut on his finger that day. Right? Now, I'm sure Dassey was a young kid in with savvy interrogators who got him to, you know, talk more than he wanted. But understand, Dassey makes several factual statements. Did you know the guys interviewing Dassey at the time of the interview did not know that Teresa Hallback had been shot not once but twice in the head? Right? The guys interviewing Dassey thought that Hallback had only been shot once. Right? It was Brendan Dassey who told them that she was shot twice. Right? And so, my point to you is simply, Stephen Avery, post-prison, we don't have to go back to Avery before he gets wrongfully convicted the first time, right? After he's released from prison, just understand that there's at least one underage woman who claims that he sexually assaulted her. I would encourage you to look at the judge's comments when the judges ended Stephen Avery's parental rights. This was after Avery wrote his wife some very hard letters from prison, right, where he talked about getting back at her for divorcing him, right? So Avery, you may have heard about the cat incident, Avery throwing a cat into a fire. Right? Can we agree that Stephen Avery is not a Boy Scout? Can we agree that not all of the relevant information about his past was actually depicted in this Netflix documentary? Right? Can we agree that Stephen Avery's statements to the police seem to contradict the statements of other witnesses? Right? I mean, the fact that Avery won't even own up to having a bonfire the day Teresa Hallback goes missing. That's a bit of a head scratcher, isn't it? Right? Also, his calls really make no sense. He's meeting with her between 2 and 2.30, but yet he's calling her around 2.24 and 2.35 using star 69. He does admit to the cops the 435-ish call, right? He claims, this is the one where he doesn't use star 67, right? He uh, claims that uh, he wanted her to come back to the property, right? That's what he claims. And he calls, well, just to understand, apparently her cell phone, her cell phone is burning, just right outside his house in the burn barrel. Understand that Fabian comes by and smells burning plastic 25 minutes later. The plastic's already burning. Understand Brandon Dassey goes by the burn barrel before 435 when this call happens, right? Because Dassey's supposed to be there around 345, right? So, my recommendation to you is to research the evidence yourself, right? There's a lot of misinformation happening here online. Understand, too, you know, Brandon Dassey, even after he recants his confession, owns up to the fact that, of course, there was bleach on his jeans that day. Of course he has to because the authorities have the bleach jeans. Right? There was bleach on his jeans. And how did he get the bleach on his jeans? This is Dassey after he changes his story. He gets the bleach on his jeans by helping Uncle Stephen clean up the floor of his garage. Right? They apparently use bleach, gasoline, and paint thinners. Right? Think it through. Anyway, um, in sum, Avery's November 9th statement to the police 
simply doesn't jive with the other evidence, right? Why would Avery give a statement to the police? That's hard to believe, right? He won't even own up to burning the items in his burn barrel, right? The cell phone and the camera. Think about it, right? Avery these days claims that he may have been set up by family members, right? How could that possibly be and fit the timeline? Let's say that Bobby Dassey's right. Let's say that at 245-ish, Teresa Hallback is there, right? And she's walking toward Stephen Avery's trailer. Are you telling me that family members on the fly would come up with a conspiracy that would have her camera burning in the burn barrel by 5 o'clock? That they would be able to move her car and somehow get Stephen's blood in the vehicle, get her blood in the back of the vehicle? Right? Make sure she's shot in the head twice. Is that remotely believable to you? Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Do me a favor. If you're going to make the claim that I have the facts wrong, then tell us what the facts are. In other words, if you feel that I'm misquoting Avery's November statement to the police, his November 9th, 2005 statement to the police, right? Then do us a favor and refer to the actual portions of that statement that you feel portray the facts differently. Is that too much to ask? Right? If you feel that, let's say Bobby Dassey didn't see Teresa Hallback there at around 2.45 p.m., right? If you feel that Earl Avery's friend Fabian didn't smell burning plastic at around 5 p.m., why not refer to the relevant portions of the trial transcripts or refer us to a website, a credible website? where there's a transcript citation or, you know, at least annotated version of the facts, okay? Don't stop at just saying, you're crazy, the guy's innocent, right? Tell us why these facts aren't what they are, right? Tell us why you believe Avery's version of events in his November 9th statement to the police that he didn't even use the fire pit, that by his own admission, he burns tires in the fire pit days before Teresa Hallback visits, right? Just understand the forensic experts found that her bones were interwoven with the steel belts on those tires. In other words, because of the way the bones mix with the tires. Experts thought that the bones were burned with the tires, that the tires were used as an accelerant. Stephen Avery even admits to burning tires, believe it or not. In his November 9th statement to law enforcement, he just makes the claim that he burned the tires days before Hallback visited. Anyway, that's how I see it. I hope to hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.